Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, June 12, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a reminder from Brad not to forget about Lockybot. Lockybot was big last year, sort of October last year, and it typically spread, well, like most of this malware via malicious emails, in particular sort of these shipping notifications and the like. I guess people got better in identifying these types of emails. Maybe also anti-malware got better in eliminating this particular threat. So we haven't heard about in a while, but as Brad points out, it's still very much alive and going around infecting people who don't have these precautions in place. And talking about updates, 360 NetLab, also known as Chihu 360, gives us an update on some of these JSON RPC scans looking for vulnerable Ethereum wallets. These scans typically hit port 8545, and we have written about this in the past as well, but what NetLab 360 now did is that they actually followed up with some of these scans and looked at some of of the wallet addresses that have been doing this for a while. Well, amazingly, they got $20 million worth of Ethereum now in their wallet that was used in these random scans. And talking about cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrency miners are still a big thing. They're still being installed using any number of vulnerabilities. Now, it has so far been pretty simple to spot these miners because they take up a lot of CPU time. Now, a more recent miner that was now discovered is a little bit more careful. Whenever a user starts task manager, process explorer, process hacker, essentially tools to review the CPU usage, this miner will terminate. It will also terminate if the user does start any number of popular games that will also require a lot of CPU. So in order to not get detected, it will then terminate to not interfere with this game. This was really something that was anticipated for a while now. We have certainly seen miners that no longer take up the entire CPU, but only take up part of it to be more difficult to detect. And Apple updated its review guidelines for the App Store, specifically outlawing cryptocurrency mining. Apple amended existing language, which essentially did restrict apps that rapidly train a battery, generate excessive heat, or put unnecessary strain on device resources, as the guidelines stated, and now is specifically calling out cryptocurrency mining. And this is not just for iOS apps, this also affects Mac OS applications distributed via the App Store. So you can still run a cryptocurrency miner, you just can't install it via the App Store. The one exception that Apple allows for is if the cryptocurrency mining is not performed on the device. So you could certainly publish an application that controls a cloud-based miner. And we have talked quite a bit about business email compromise in the past. The one thing we haven't really talked about is any arrests in any of these cases. Well, today the FBI announced that it together with the Department of Homeland Security, Department of the Treasury and foreign law enforcement agencies did actually take down a larger ring of individuals that is alleged to be involved in business email compromise. A total of 42 arrests were made in the US and actually in Nigeria, 29 individuals were arrested. Now, to illustrate the scale of the operation, the FBI also noted that $2.4 million were seized and $14 million of fraudulent wire transfers were disrupted as part of this operation. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.